We're going to talk about the types of solutions with regards to how much can be dissolved and how we use solubility charts. So our learning objective is that you should be able to distinguish among the different types of solutions such as electrolytes, non-electrolytes, unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated solutions, and strong and weak acids and bases. This is a lot, so today we're just going to be focusing on unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated solutions. When we talk about these three words, they deal with a description of how much solute is actually dissolved relative to the amount that can be dissolved. So we'll start with that first word, saturated. Saturated means that a solution is at its limits. The amount of solute that is in there is the absolute most that I can dissolve at a given temperature. It actually turns out that when I heat solutions, I can dissolve a little bit more. But at a given temperature, if I can't dissolve anything else, we call that solution saturated. A solution that is saturated will have no more solute able to dissolve. So if I add any extra, what will happen is that extra solid is just going to go to the bottom, and it's just going to sit there and start to clump up. This is one way that we can tell we're saturated. We start to see the buildup of solid in our container. Now, an unsaturated solution is one where we are still below the limit of the amount of solute I could dissolve at a given temperature. Um, this means that all of my solid has dissolved, and if I add any more, I can still dissolve it. So I'll see that I can do a quick test to see if, if a solution is unsaturated by adding some solute if it dissolves, then it'll go back to just being a clear solution, and I'll know that we were unsaturated. Finally, the last term, supersaturated, describes a solution that is holding more solute than it should be. It's above the limit. That word super means to be above. Um, this is a solution where I shouldn't have been able to dissolve a certain amount at a given temperature. But what is done is we heat the solution up to a higher temperature, dissolve more at a higher temperature, and then we let it cool down, and this makes a supersaturated solution. What happens is if I add any more solute, the water can't hold on to the, to the solute, and it'll start to crash back out. And we call this process crystallization, so we'll start to see crystals forming. This is a really great technique for purifying solids. I can uh, make supersaturated solutions and then crash them out as these crystals, and these crystals are pure uh, material, and I can collect them. So these three terms describe how much of a solute there is relative to the amount that I can dissolve. Now, scientists have been doing this for a very long time, and they've developed these solubility curves or solubility charts, which show us uh, how much of a solute should be able to be dissolved at different temperatures. To keep things constant, we compare everything to 100 grams of water. And so what you're seeing here is lots of different lines with... Um, different chemical substances on them and they tell us how much of that particular solute I can dissolve at different temperatures. Um, the line therefore represents saturated. So if I want a saturated solution of uh, sodium nitrate, this NaNO3, at 10 degrees Celsius, I know that I'd have to dissolve about 80 grams. Um, calcium chloride has a lower solubility at 10 degrees Celsius. Calcium chloride can only dissolve like 63 grams. So in this way, I can compare the solubility of different solids. It can also help me to classify solutions because if I know the line represents a saturated solution, then if I'm at 10 degrees Celsius and I've dissolved 70 grams of sodium nitrate, this red substance, then I'm below the line, which means I still have room to um, dissolve more. So under the line would be unsaturated. Anything above the line would be supersaturated. 
really you just got to be careful read the questions that are being given and this is just like reading a xy chart look at the temperature and the solubilities to figure out what the best answer is for a particular question and so here's some practice and